Hey gang, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple and compact infrared detection device that can be used to sweep over a room, to look for hidden night vision cameras, or to detect any other source of infrared radiation, including testing infrared remote controls. Over here, we have a night vision keychain camera with motion detection, and we have a wireless camera here. These can be purchased with infrared illuminators, but the one here does not have any. Depending on the type of infrared illuminators that are used in these devices, you may only see a faint red glow at night, or if a 940 nanometer LED is used, you won't see anything at all. And that's when this device would come in extremely handy. Okay, let me show you what you're going to need to make this device. Now in order to make this device, you're going to need everything you see right here, and I will post a link in the video description area to make it easier for you to find components to use for this project. 9 volt battery, 9 volt battery snap, a small plastic project box. You can see mine already has the holes cut into it. The on and off switch is going to be this rocker switch. I pulled this out of some scrapped electronics as well as the potentiometer. All that's required is a simple single pole, single throw. Over here is a piezo alarm or piezo buzzer. Inside this component, underneath this epoxy, is a drive circuit used to create oscillations. And those oscillations are what cause that piezo element to vibrate and create a sound. For the potentiometer over here, which is going to adjust the sensitivity, you're going to need a knob to go on top of it. Over here, an extremely high gain NPN transistor. It's an MPS45WA, and it's used in another video of mine for a radiation detector, actually an ionization chamber. It's a very cool circuit. If you haven't seen it after this video, you can click on the circle with the eye right here. You'll see the drop-down menu, or you can wait for the very end of this video, and you'll see that video displayed. In addition to the transistor, you're going to need a power indicating LED. This is a clear green. You can use a green one, a blue one, a red one, whichever color you want, just to let you know that the circuit is active. And in addition to the power indicating LED, you're going to want to use around a 4.7K to a 7.5K resistor, which is going to limit the current through the LED to light up that LED at a very low current which will also conserve battery power. Now the part that's going to be detecting the infrared is right over here. It's nothing more than an infrared phototransistor. And you can see some infrared phototransistors will come with a clear epoxy, and some come with this dark smoked. And the advantage of using this dark one is it greatly decreases sensitivity to visible light while still allowing infrared light to trigger the circuit. Now I'm going to go over the schematic. It's very simple. After the schematic, I'm going to be gluing everything in position and showing you how I connect it up. Now there's not much to the schematic. It's very simple. Over here is your 9 volt battery, positive. Over to your switch, single pull, single throw. You can use a rocker switch like I used, or you can use a push on, push off, whatever you desire. Once this switch is in the closed position, power will flow through this water clear red or green LED and you have a current limiting resistor anything between 4.7 K and 10 K quarter watt is sufficient from this point here you're going to continue over to the collector of the infrared phototransistor the collector is going to be the longer lead on the infrared phototransistor the emitter of the infrared phototransistor is going to connect to the base of the MPSW45A high gain transistor and also from that point you're going to have your potentiometer preferably a 500K one side has the wiper tied in with it and then the opposite side goes to the negative rail and then you're going to take the emitter from that high gain transistor connect that to the negative rail as well the piezo buzzer or piezo alarm you can see right here has the hole for the sound to come out and over there is the positive so just make sure the plus is connected to the positive rail and the negative to the collector of the transistor
Okay, all my components are now glued in position. The rocker switch, and below it I drilled another hole for the power indicating LED. Up here is the piezo alarm. Next to that is the infrared sensor. And you're going to want to take the MPSW 45A high gain Darlington transistor and you're going to take the plastic body of it and glue it to the plastic. Do not allow any of the pins to touch anything when you install it inside the project box. Over here you can see the potentiometer in position with the knob installed. And you can see there's plenty of room over here for the 9 volt battery when I'm all finished. It'll go right in the middle. And I got the button snap and I can connect it up to the circuit. And this is what it looks like when mine was all soldered together on the inside. You can see I used the leads from the photo transistor at the top along with the leads coming off the LED for the power indicator and the leads off of the NPN transistor. Just bent them all around with a needle nose into the correct position and soldered them. Plenty of room right here for the 9 volt battery. Lay the battery in there and it actually fits so good that I don't have to even put any glue under the battery or anything else. It just slides a little bit forward and then the cover snaps right into position. I also put some glue where the red wire and the black wire ties into the circuit. So if you ever have to change the battery, you're not going to be wiggling that connection and have it snap. Okay, let me put the cover back on and demonstrate how it works. Now using this is very simple. You're going to turn it on, power indicator, and you're going to slowly rotate the knob until it barely becomes audible the sound. That's full, so you can go this way. Right there, that's right on the edge of where it wants to trigger. All right, now I'm in a room with a light on, and you can see the light is not having any effect. But be warned, you cannot use this in a room where there's ambient light entering from the sun. The sun will trigger this very easily. So when you're going to be looking for a hidden camera, the infrared illuminators on that camera, you're going to do this at night, of course, and if there's some lighting on the room, that's just fine. But if you suspect that there might be a hidden camera in a light fixture, then it's best to turn the light fixture off, and then you're going to sweep the light fixture. So let me give you a quick demonstration. One just showing how well it detects infrared. We'll use this remote control, Samsung. So let me just turn it in this direction. And I'm going to be standing back about six feet. Here we go. And a little further. Now one thing to note, because the infrared is coming out in a very narrow beam on the remote control, and also usually with the infrared illuminators on a camera, you're going to want to take this and hold it at a lot of different angles in areas that you suspect might have a camera. If you'd like to make this even more sensitive than what you see right here, what you can do right around this infrared photo transistor, you would place a small reflective shield. And an ideal shield that I can think of would be one from one of those mini mag lights. You know the reflective shield where the bulb is inside? You would place it over this infrared photo transistor, glue it, leaving that in the center, so any light aimed at different angles would hit the reflector and direct it towards the infrared photo transistor. Now I'm going to show you how you can locate a hidden camera. The hidden camera we're going to be looking for is this night vision and motion detection keychain camera, which I show in a previous video. I'm going to hide this and show you how you can find it easily. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my extensive video playlist for other great videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.